good afternoon, good afternoon everybody, my beautiful friends. Um, I don't know how many of you that remember most of the interviews that we've um, granted some of my brothers that came out from prison the way I spent my own eight years in prison and God showed me mercy. We have my wonderful brother here who has gone through a terrible situation in Kirikiri uh, prison and uh, maximum prison and then in uh, on those states, right? Yeah, Washington State Prison and Ogo State Prison, Ebara Prison. He has spent 13 horrible years of a crime he had no clue about. He was not involved in. They see, we have so many questions we would like to ask. But the, the truth of the matter is, who is willing and ready to answer us the question? I mean, we live in a country where the government do exactly what they want. Nobody care about the poor people, nobody care about the innocent people. I mean, just carrying people and put inside prison because they have no good money to pay for lawyer or because they have no one to fight for them. I found it abominable. It's very, very wrong. This is another interview we're going to grant uh, to my brother here. And I don't know how many of my friends that are there now, you can, you are welcome to join us here to have a discussion. If you have any question, please feel free to type in your question. They are here to answer you. This is my Olu Soji. Please tell them your name. Adewole Olu Soji. Adewole Olu Soji is the brother that we are talking about here today. He spent 13 years in Nigerian prison for nothing, for a crime that they just lay upon him that he has no clue about. You will hear from him soon. And then this is the wife of my brother. Please, can you tell them your name, man? Adewole Oluwatoyin. Oluwatoyin Adewole is the wife of Adesoji. Adesoji. Adewole Oluwatoyin. This is the wife. I mean, what she has gone through for 13 years outside there with their two kids is something that we can't even explain. And I mean, if you want to pay her back, there's no amount of money to pay her back for what she has suffered. Just put yourself in her shoe now. I want us to just reason properly here. She's, she is in outside there with the two kids for 13 years and some months. Nobody asks her, how are you surviving? Nobody said, let me give you a little thing. Every, in fact, she was stigmatized. She was seen as a wife of a criminal. But this young man that you're seeing sitting right here with me, has nothing to do with the crime. You will hear from her herself. She will talk, and then the wife will also tell you a little bit about her, herself, what she went through. What, 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 what are we doing in this country? Why are we treating our citizens like this? When we see the Europeans or Americans come to Nigeria, we honor them like God, we treat them like God, but our own citizens are suffering in their own country. Is it right? I want us to be aware that this thing that we are doing is the reason why God departs from Nigeria. You know, when I say Nigeria is a state of a God, God glory has departed. I am not saying it because I hate Nigeria. I love the country. I want to I want to contribute my own quota to make things right. But we cannot make things right, throwing innocent people inside the prison because of what we think or because we cannot afford to pay a lawyer. This is this is painful. I was in Kirikiri prison. Some weeks back ago, when I went there to go and do a, a character training, I, do, I usually go there weekly, sometimes, sometimes every second week to do character training. And this, my young brother, was lucky to be one of those that were in my teaching, in my class that day. I was teaching them faith, right? That was faith that we were talking about that day. Yes, I yes. used Abraham uh -huh. as an example, uh -huh. Daniel, then yeah, yeah. Shadrach, yeah. Meshach, and Abednego. I mean, I empowered them with faith. And that faith made this young man to come out, surrender his life to Christ. And that day I prayed for him. With some other military men that were there, many of them they came out, we prayed together for I prayed for together for them with them. And look at him now. God finally, the government does go in there and set him free. He is a free man today. But I want you to hear him by himself. Let him tell you a little bit how it was to be in a prison for 13 years for what you did not know about. And he will tell you a little bit what happened over the crime, why they put him there. And then I will also want you to hear from the wife the trauma, the stigmatization. I mean, the, 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 the things that she went through. 
I know some people are criticizing me, saying, why are you setting us a criminals free? Why are you going to the prison? Please find something to do, evangelist, that's not a good work. Listen to me. I pity those that are saying this thing because they don't know what is happening. 75% of the people inside Nigerian prison are innocent people, innocent prisoners. Let me say it again so you don't think I'm, I'm wasn't my mouth for nothing. I say 75 percent. Tell the president, the assistant vice president, governors, everybody that I said, let them come and investigate what I'm saying. 75 percent of the people inside Nigerian prison are innocent people. It is a very sad scenario. It's a very it's unthinkable thing. It is mind blowing for any European to hear that you put 75 percent people innocent people inside prison. Example I'm giving you is Kirikiri Medium Prison, where we have over 3,000 prisoners there. About 80% of them have not been to court. For 10 years, 15 years, 14 years, we've seen 19 years. I showed you the video before from a Benin, State, Benin City. 19 years woman and the brother, 19 years in waiting trial. These things are not supposed to be heard in a country. If you truly want to move further, the way you treat these people, the way you treat the husband and wife and children of this country, determines how God will come for our rescue. But as far as I'm talking to you right now, Nigeria is a state of a cupboard. That means the glory of God has departed. Everything you see here is just a shadow. We are living on our past merit. We don't have a country. As far as I, Christian Kuka, the man is Christian is concerned, there's no country. Until we come back to Christ, what am I saying? We must go back to 2 Chronicles 7.14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, walk away, turn away from their wicked ways, God said that then he will hear from heaven, he will forgive our sins, and he will heal our land. Look at what this woman suffered with two children outside there. Nobody could come for her rescue. Nobody asked her, Madam, how are you surviving? And the truth of the matter is that the way we were having a child today, and they told me that this man is the breadwinner of the home. She had no job, and the man was the one sat supply everything the family needs and the mother, the father, everybody. Unfortunately the dad is dead now and the mom your mom is still alive here. Yes, yes. Have, his mom is still alive. And now what we are going to do here, I'm gonna ask my brothers a very few questions. They will answer you. They travel all the way from AKT. See what time did you wake up this morning? 4 30. 4 30 a.m. They woke up this morning to come to Abounding Grace Foundation to grab this interview because I think he felt that we need to be uh, we need to hear this interview. When I came there to pray for him, Heavenly Father answered our prayer, and 13 years was a forgotten thing. Now he's out of the prison. But coming out of the prison is number one. Remember what I told you when God said to the to Pharaoh, Let my people go, the people will go after going. What happened? Coming out from Egypt is the first process. What about the second process? The Egypt leaving you, the trauma, the pain, the, 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 the dramatic happenings inside the prison. How are we going to take it away from this man? How can we take it away from this woman? The only way now is for us to join hands together and get this pain away from them. Support them to find something to do. He has the occupation. He's, uh, he's uh, I mean, what did you study against? Uh? Nursing science. Nursing science. He can, if you have any way to get him a very good job that can fetch him a good salary, we need that help right now. We need it now. Then we can keep on shouting until we see this nonsense that is going on in Nigeria to stop. Judges should listen to this video. We need to share this video so that people will know that this is not a joke. Nigeria is a fraud. Things are not going well. We cannot continue like this. Many people are suffering inside the prison. My brother, please, just to make it brief, brief, because we have many things to ask you. What, how has it been? What really happened? In a nutshell, tell us what happened. Why they put you in the prison, please, sir. On 27th of August, 2003, I came from a...
school that day. And then there was a, a kind of a fighting in our community. So later on, he scattered some of our houses because my father was a blacksmith and he has died. And inside the, our home, inside the room there, he stopped. He saw several broken guns because my father was a blacksmith, old uh, dead guns there. And I, when I came and they asked me that who, has the, who is the owner of this house, I said, I am the one. They said, you want to see me in police station. That is how I walk myself with my leg into the police station on that day. That was 28, the second day, what was Friday. And that is how they arrested me, they locked me into the cell. And from there, because the land that my father bought and built his house, they were, there was a, the uh, conditions, uh, that is, uh, they were fighting on the land. Through that, people in that community wrote, uh, wrote against my father. That is how they transferred the case back to Ushubu on that day. And from there, they carried me to court, from court to Elisha prison. And from Elisha prison, they did the case and they condemned me to death. And from there, they transferred me to Ibarra prison. And I didn't know what to do. That's how I lost the admission there. So later, later on, and I, I continued to buy, package myself in that prison. Nobody to ask of me. Nobody care for me from the court. And they have, they have condemned me to death. So after that, they transferred me to uh, Kirikiri. That is Lagos. So from there, I spent uh, many years there. More than four years. I spent more than four years in uh, Abekuta prison and many years in uh, uh, Elisha prison in Oso State. So later on, there was a, a man called Kelly, they call him, him Evangelist Christian Chukuka. He came to the place. I didn't know what to do because I had always joined every fellowship that came around. So later on, he came to come and teach us. He taught us a character. Character, that, is, that was the program. It's a so, character training where yeah. we teach them how to behave, things they shouldn't do and what they, could, they should do. So I didn't know what to do, I joined the program. So they taught us faith that day. After, after the whole program that day, he prayed for us, we need them, I gave my life to Jesus Christ. So from then he prayed very well that day to, for, to us and with many of the soldiers that was there. So many soldiers were was released after the, two, two weeks after. So the third week, the government of Oslo State picked my paper and they worked on it. That is how they released me on 31st of December 2016. Mm. That is how I traveled back to Ikiti. So I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to say because they have spent, I spent 13 years, four months without doing nothing. Even the, even the government of Oslo State, they can testify about this to, to, that, that okay. happened to me. Now, have you gotten anything doing since December that you came out from prison? Nothing, nothing, nothing. doing. Okay, now, let's, let, let's just put this in context here. Yeah? Somebody has been deprived his freedom, you know, unjustly sentenced, and he spent 13 years. Yes, government, thank you for hearing the prayer worked. Trust me, everybody, if you don't believe it, believe it. We have been to 166 prisons. We have 38,000 prisoners with their name on our list that have given their life to Christ. Over 5,400 prisoners have been freed. Both death sentences, over 50 death sentences have been freed. Thank God for his life. Thank God for many of them. What we usually do is to find something for them doing. Like today, there's no way he will go out from my house without me giving him money. But the money I'm giving to give him is not that it's money that will be able to make him to become what you You have to help. Everybody needs to put that. Let's find him a job. Let's find him a job. We need a job for him. The wife has a, a petty business that he's doing, but we need to support that business and I have to do it today. I must do something today because I believe in action. I don't believe in talking. They travel all the way from the state to come here for this very reason. So whatever I have in my account today, I will clear it off and I will give it to them and they will go back there and do it to start something doing. But we have to stay on our feet to support them. We can't allow, allow government to destroy our people like that. We cannot. I will not be part of it. That is just my own taking. And then one other thing again I ask, I know that when I came that day to teach you guys character and so on, there are so many of you there that came out, both Air Force, Navy, military men that came out there and they gave their life to Christ. And many of them have called me. Do you know some of them? I know one of the, a, a man, 
man Ayo. Ayo. Mm. He, has he has got his freedom. Yes, yeah, 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 uh, yes, freedom. Because okay. I was a student. And there's, there's one other guy that said that he's a Navy guy. Navy guy, me. yes, yes. Gain his freedom also. There are so many, so many of them. And these people I'm telling you, they Somebody don't come from Kafancha self. Wow. A soldier. He came from, they transferred him from the Kafancha mm. to, that is, a, this is you know, Niger state, one of the northern states. Mm. So he has gained his freedom because he was among those people that, that gave their life to Christ. That day when I came, I don't know if you remember, I, anyway, I posted something about that during that December period as well. I said that I went to uh, Kirikiri for character training. So many soldiers, so many military men gave their life to Christ and I prayed for them. Believe me, many of them. Yes, I said the captain is free. People are crucifying me for that, but I don't give a toast. Feel free because these kind of people that are putting inside there and they are dying inside the prison, it is not right. I will keep on praying them out of the prison as long as they repented. If they are criminals and they are there, my prayer goes like this. They will remain there until they repent. And once they repent and God sees genuine repentance in them, they will go home. I don't care how much you hate me for that. I don't care what you think about me over that. The most important thing is that they have given their life to Christ and they are not going back to crime. Then Father, set them free. And you remember, whoever son of man sets free is free indeed. You cannot do anything against them anymore. This one is a free man and he will never go back to prison as far as I'm concerned. And no weapon formed against him today will prosper. And from today, he will begin to generate fun because as he has stepped his feet into my house, my house is a holy ground. As he has stepped his feet with the wife, and the children that are in my room there, those kids and this man and the woman here, they will never remain the same. They will never remain the same. May God bless you. Now I'm going to ask a question to the wife here. Please, ma'am, what, how have you been coping? You know, I adore you. Do you know that I love you so much, ma'am? You have done a great job to be outside for 13 years. I'm not talking about 13 months, so people hear me properly. I didn't say 13 months, I'm saying 13 years. This woman has been out there being trusting the husband. She's not been running about cheating with other men, which the man can testify. She stays with the husband, knowing fully well that the husband did not commit this crime. She stood by him. Which way, Nigeria? What are we doing? What are we doing? When I speak, people will say that you have too much anger. You have this too holy anger. Calm down. Calm down for what? Calm down. Are you going to calm down if they put your son in prison for 13 years for nothing? Will you calm down? I'm asking question. If they put your wife or your husband 13 years in prison without committing a crime, if you come out, will you calm down? She is an awesome woman and there is no way financially I'm not going to support them today I'm going to support them and it's because of this woman I'm doing what I have to do for them today financially I say I will clear my account today whatever we have in abounding grace foundation I'm going to give it to her and this man they will go and start whatever to support this woman then this man will be looking for a good job we have to help them to get a job yes will you be happy the little person said, no, 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 you cannot be happy. How can somebody put you in a prison for 13 years and telling you a story? I am fed up of story. This thing happened in Anambra. I went to Anambra and I spoke, I shouted, I shouted. And the governor of Anambra heard me. He released 20 people in October when I left Anambra. 20 of them, both this and so on, he released 20 and gave them one, one million naira each. That is 20 million naira to compare with 20, 15, 25 years they spent in that prison. But at least it's something. What am I soliciting for? I am asking the government, stop this madness. Enough is enough. What are we doing? Pray for Nigeria, pray for Nigeria. What are you praying for? When everybody is badly behaved, everybody are very wicked. Throughout the whole federation, prisoners are dying everywhere. People are suffering, sickness is everywhere. Nobody cares about them. Mommy, please, how do you handle these 13 years? How do you manage to cope with your two kids? How do you manage to take the insult of the villagers? People are around you calling you a wife of a criminal and insulting your husband for nothing that for what he did not do. How do you handle this? Please.
this, please. In the, just tell, tell the world, let them know. Yeah, during this period of 30 years, it is a terrible time. It is a hell here on earth. People deserted me. People make mockery of me. Different things. In fact, some people, they want me to say a little thing just to bring the whole matter on ground to insult me. During all this time, all I know is that my husband is an innocent. I knew him very well and you know, I need to stand by him. The Bible even says, it said, it said, it said, it said, it's possible for father and mother to forget you, but the Lord himself will never forget you. You know, everybody they sat me, everybody, people that have been friends together, immediately they reject me. I could not talk to anywhere. I need to start, I think maybe I'll pick up my certificate to go under for a job. But I only get a job. But later on, I went to do all this dirty business. Then I get money to begin to start little little business. To raise up our two kids because they need to go to school. So with all these things, this period, in fact, it, I just thank God because the Lord puts an end to it. Because I know the Lord will bring my husband out from Babylon. Uh, we take him to Zion. That is it. It is a terrible time. It's not easy. It's not easy at all. It's not easy at all. It's not easy at all. Uh, in fact, many men around even in a in a in a in a uh, territory. They, they 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 so people see me as an opportunity. Not so much my husband is not around. My children want to eat. They want to do one thing or the other. But to God be the glory. The Lord uphold me. Throughout, because I see, he, I see it that if I should do anything, it's not even at all. He doesn't know, but God is looking at me. I hold on to God, and one way or the other, I start a little business. And I always pray, go to church. At times, they will send my children from school. I will go to one back. Along the line, the Lord have his soul. And today, you know, the the goal that is that already, the Lord has you no know, brought him back to life. So I give glory to God. God bless you, man. I know, I know that you are, you are doing a lot. You are doing a lot, but um, I can assure you that I'm not gonna let you go empty-handed today. You don't step into an ordinary ground. Yes, I'm a man that empty myself at all times. I'm gonna empty myself today again for you to make sure that your business is going well. And we stand by you. We are friends for life. You and me, your husband, your two children, we are friends for life. And when I say friend, I mean friend are the one that wipe away tears of the other one when they are crying. I will be there to wipe it off. I am called for this mission, nothing else. I thank you for the patient and for holding on to, holding on to uh, your husband to come home. Because the innocent man is here. Look at the pain he went through for 13 years. I don't know. I don't know what to say. Just that I'm, yes, my heart is bleeding because this is what I see in the prison every time I step into prison. Every time I go into prison, I see people in pain. I see people going through a lot of things. And there's some people are sitting down there in the government and then uh, thinking that all is well. Say so Nigeria has be patient with us, be patient with you. We'll be patient with you for 50 something years. Nigeria is going to be 57 years in October, but yet abominable country. A country with no hope as, I'm, as far as I'm concerned. We don't have any hope until we come back to Jesus Christ. We have forsaken Christ completely. These are just, I have so many others that I want to bring in for interview. So many of them, but it's just what I feel like, uh, let me not do this because it, it seems like I'm blowing my trumpet. Let Jesus Christ alone be the one that understands me. If you don't understand, it's okay, I don't care. But I know that Jesus Christ understands. When you see my aggression, when I'm ministering, people say that I'm so aggressive, I carry burden, I carry pain. When I look at this people, what they are going through is tearing me apart. This woman has to withstand for 13 years. Men were trying to devour her, to destroy her. She held on, knowing fully well that the husband is innocent. My brother, I know that uh, the situation in Nigeria prison is terrible. I don't know what you think you want to tell the government. If there's anything you want to beg them to do to better the Nigerian prison. I mean, I, I, you don't need to tell me about the condition. I see it already. 
people are dying inside the prison on daily basis you and i know that one that is not making up story you know i know it daily basis we are bringing our dead body in prison and there's no medicine for them there is no good water no good food and all these many terrible things is there any advice you want to give to nigerian government concerning the prisons uh, there are many advice <laughs> because please, the please. only thing is uh, is that uh, when i was in nisha prison i spent years there and during the years several people died like I can't, when I was in the Barra prison at Bekuta, oh. several people died. Several people died. In a week, there was a week when seven inmates died. In a week. So, when I was in Lagos prison, uh, several people also died. In which some people can testify to that. And also, what I want the government to do is that there must be proper investigations on, on every case. Yes. That, because concern to, to concern to my case, there was no proper investigation because the people that committed the offense they were later arrested and police leave them. They release, they just open the, the cell, they open the cell, and those people ran away. Later, they say those people have run away, yes, yes, yes. and upon that, they didn't release us, they didn't release me because they knew that we did not commit the offense. So in order to subsidize what has happened in their in their stations, they now abandon our case our case and fall forward it to the executioner executioner stage. Right. So that is why they, they condemn the case right. to death. So now and that is what I want to say. And the third the, the third thing I want to say is that about the government, government should try to speed up every cases. Because in ATM, only ATM, I spent eight years. What, what is ATM? Awaiting trial. Awaiting trial. Awaiting trial, okay? That's yes. what is ATM. I showed you a woman with 19 years awaiting trial in Benin. So listen to that again. Eight years plus. That is when I, I spent in the awaiting trial. They later condemned the case. And I was it. And the fifth thing is about the drugs in prisons and the, and the welfare materials. Like uh, the, Because we have some says that inmates are sleeping on the ground. Bare ground. Nothing to add to it be on the ground before the daybreak. So many inmates have uh, they, 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 at that time, many of them have, uh, have discovered many things. Many of the disease sickness are, are overriding them. So, what I want government to do is that they should speed up and know how to take care, take care of the inmates in the concerning the welfare of the uh, amenities. And you know why, why they, they, they are trying to stop me from going into the uh, prisons with Peter now? There's a lady from Delta State um, that is working so hard. She, uh, you know, I told you what happened in Kujé prison. I videoed it and I have the video. The woman make a big deal and start to make problem with her coach, uh, with the DCP. Then he nearly lost his job. So now they are working hard to stop me from going into prisons with video. But it doesn't matter. If they stop the video, just know that I'm not going to stop. Without video, I will still come out and tell you what happened. And this is the evidence. You need to just believe these things because, you know, when I'm saying, some people might think I'm exaggerating. That's why sometimes I have to bring out, bring out some of the people that are free from prison so that we can be able to, you can hear from them directly. But then, one other thing again, we are struggling, we're fighting for a long time. We have millionaires in Nigeria. We have billionaires everywhere. We are looking for empty land, even if three or four acres of land, where we can use for rehabilitation. As they come out from prison, we will get them into a place where they will stay, get them a house to sleep, to sleep and then find, begin to equip them with skills. Skill acquisition is very important because many of them doesn't just get job easily anymore. We are asking for government, please help us, give us empty land. People that have money in abroad or home, please help us. If you want to come and build it yourself, come and build. I am not asking you money to give for me as a title offering for me to go and buy private jets. I'm asking you to support us so that we can get empty land in Lagos here, yeah? other states in Nigeria, in Edo State where we have so many ex convicts now that need help. So we can be able to build something for them. Have fish pond. Farming ground, least empty lands around there, but they must have a place to lay their head if they are working or if they are being trained. Then we give them sound doctrine, 
Teach them who Christ is. Let them be solidified in that faith that they heard me preach in prison. These things are what we are asking for. Let us not just sit down and cry for them, pity for them, and do it. No, let us put action into all these things. Because Christianity is active. It's and I want to thank you all that are supporting us. There's a lady that also sent money for me today. She has money for me. I'm going to gather all of them today and I will give it to them so that they can go home and make sure that they have come to a holy ground. That is what Christianity is. I thank you all for listening to us. But then, if you have any question, you can feel free to do so while they answer you. If you have any question, throw it out now. Let me ask them so they can give you an answer. If there's something you want to know about Nigeria prison there, you know, and every other thing, just that they, we don't want this thing to be too long because they are going to travel now to a kitty state today. I'm going to find a winner to get them out now to get a bus and other thing to get motor to a kitty state. So, and any other, any other question, feel, feel free to fire the question. We're going to look into it. But we must find a way to help these people. All these that are coming out. We have over 5,000 ex coming people that have come out and nobody to help them. What are we doing? Are we truly Christians? If we are truly Christians, let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. Because after all these years, nobody tell them anything. You know the trauma, how it is when he goes down to his state in a kitty state. People are looking, when he passes, they will do their nose. That's the criminal. That's the criminal. They are calling him criminal. But he is not. Even if he was, I was a criminal, I was a brutal criminal, a drug dealer that killed so many people. The people still know today that God has forgiven me and I'm, a, I'm useful to the kingdom of God. Why must we condemn them? Talk less of the one that did not even commit the crime. I understand if you call me a criminal, I will answer you because I used to be, but I'm no longer a criminal. But not people that did not commit crime. Please, let us have a compassionate heart. Let's stop molesting them. Let's stop discriminating them. Let's stop this traumatization. Let, let them have a fair chance. When they come out from prison, repented, whether criminal or not, when they are repented, let us give them a chance. Help them to get a job. Help them to get a job. I encourage you one more, okay? I know you have spent so many years. The Lord Almighty will, you see, all those things that canker worm, locusts have eaten, there will be restoration. Mm -hmm. And it starts today, or not tomorrow, today. Restoration starts today. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is going to supply all your need. Mm -hmm. My brother, those years, they are your stepping stones. Mm -hmm. I mean, you are going to climb. There will be divine speed, mm -hmm. divine speed. Mm -hmm. You will accelerate without looking back. Mm -hmm. God will get you a job that will shock you. Amen. No, 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 you don't understand me. Your children are going to be mentioned all over the world. Amen. You see this video. This video cannot stop here. People that are watching this video might not be your divine helper. There might be a divine helper. But one thing for sure is that this video is going to be heard all over the world. Amen. People will, the reason why I put three cameras on this video is because after here now, I'm taking the video on YouTube. When we get it to YouTube, we will pray until people begin to listen to this. People begin to listen to this. So they will know that innocent people are dying in our prison. They are trying to stop me because they don't want people to know the truth. Last time I was in a great prison here, they are shitting. All the shit is flowing everywhere on the floor. If you see the shit, it's so disgusting. But the DCP begged me, please don't put it on the social media. That's why I did not post it. I would have posted it and people will see epidemic in Ikoi prison and they have rich vice president is living where I'm talking about. Our vice president lives in Banana Island in Ikoi. The prison is very close to him. All the top rich, the richest men in Yoruba land, they have their houses around this place and this prison is there. People are dying. Nobody could just go there and dig sewages. I'm now looking for one point something million naira to go and do sewages. But our vice president lives in Ikoi. Other people, the worthy people in Nigeria, they live in Ikoi. No, no, no. If you doubt what I'm telling you, before God and man, I have the video of what I'm telling you. If you are one of our sponsors, go to my, my, my WhatsApp. Send me inbox. Say you want to see the video. I will give you the clip, but you will vow never to put it on the, on the media. Because if you do, God will punish you. I have promised the person who asked me to, 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 to who allowed me to record it, that I'm not going to put it on the, on the, on the, on the, on the, on the social media. They can't even, nobody care about what they are going through. 
You know, I feel sometimes like to vomit when I think about the state of this country. I feel like I want to throw up because this is abominable. Things are happening. And we are all channeling our eye on one side. APC, PDP, this and that. Is that the problem? What about the people that APC represent? What about the people that PDP represent? Is that more we that are the democracy ourselves? We are the ones. They say democracy is for the people, for the people, and the people, or whatever. I don't know how they say it. These are for the people, but nobody cares. Now, democracy in Nigeria is for the thieves, for the rogues, for the leaders. They are the ones. And they are calling the same people criminals. For how long shall we condone madness? Youth of this country, wake up, please. Be prayerful. Come to Jesus Christ. That's the only one that will direct your path. So that whenever they try to do those ready to kill people and destroy people, God will set you free. God will protect you. Please walk away from anything that looks like a bad guy, bad guy. Don't have bad friends. If you have friends that are not benefiting you in the area of Christianity or your salvation is being tampered with, please run away. Don't keep such friends. Because somehow, somehow, Nigerian police, if they cannot sort out the issue, they will use somebody to sort out the issue. That's the way it works. If they cannot resolve the crime, they must get somebody in prison so that the crime is resolved and the rank will be put in on their shoulder. If they can't resolve it, they use it to resolve it. So please don't let your head be a sacrifice head. Don't be a goat. Please be a sheep. Don't be a goat. They will use it for sacrifice. I refuse. That's why you see me every time I'm shouting. Don't let them use you. You see, my brother would have been gone. What if they would have executed him? What if I did not go to prison that day and because of the way I talked to them about myself and the faith that I told them, he touches him and he came out and I prayed from my heart. If I did not pray, he would have died in prison. What if somebody, if nobody cared like I care? How long shall we continue like this? How long? We must put hands together to stop this madness. Nigeria is a state of anarchy and we can't condone it any longer. Something has to be done. How are we going to do something? Nigerians in the diaspora, stop too much talking. Talk is cheap. Action. Put up action. Let us salvage our land. Nigerians home. Let us put action. Let's salvage this country. If we see wrong, we call it wrong. Let us not. And then church leaders. Church leaders, I hear that so many of you are good in giving money away. So many of you are giving, but it's not giving the girls is the issue. Or buying car for the girls, that is not giving. Giving is when you give to the poor people. Let us look at the right people to give. Please, there are so many people that need help right now. So many people need help right now. When you are giving wrong, God will permit those girls to use your name for sacrifice. They will use your name for something else because you are giving wrongly. We shouldn't be giving to wrong people. Let us give to the right people, please. This, uh, this is a fertile ground. Not people with plastic breasts. They are not fertile ground. That's not how it's done. My brother, I will conclude by saying that both of you are going to walk in aerodynamic from today. Heavenly Father is going to take you higher and higher. Amen. My king and my all, the alpha and omega. Anything that come out from my wallet today, from my bounding base foundation, as we close that account to transfer the money to them. Lord, let that money begin to increase this couple, increase their children in the name of Jesus. Amen. Heavenly Father, the glorious King, Abba Father, Alpha and Omega, you are the creator of heaven and earth. Touch the heart of men and women that have seen this video so they may begin to react. Abounding Grace Foundation need them and they need us to be able to do this work. And everyone that has been released from prison, we are praying that all of them will find favor in the heart of man. They will find favor favor in all ramifications. Amen. Heavenly Father, let that favor come from our book. In the name of Jesus. Amen. As they come in this holy ground peacefully, they will go home to a kitty state peacefully. Amen. No one come against them shall prosper. Amen. The road that they are going to apply, if there is any one of them that is tasty of blood, the vehicle will not pass through there. In Amen. the name of Jesus. Amen. Nobody will use your head for sacrifice. Amen. I say your heads are symbol of greatness. Amen. You will not die on time. Amen. I have spoken. Therefore, success is is your prosperity. Amen. You shall prosper in all ramifications. God will grant you grace. Amen. Wealth shall pursue Amen. you. From today you will weep no more. Amen. I say you will cry no more. Amen. The Lord has wiped away your tears. Amen. Tears shall come back no more. Amen. We give the enjoy for the night. The joy comes in the morning. This is your morning. Go and rejoice.
rejoice. Amen. Eh? And you shall be well with Amen. Amen. Anyone that look at you with an accusing finger one more time, I say they will dry up in that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Anyone that accuse any of your family member, your descendant wrongly again, I say they shall be judged in the name of Jesus. Amen. And any tongue that rise against you in the United States, in Nigeria, in Africa, in the globe, globally, every part of the world, that person will be condemned. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I paid a price 13 years in prison. It's not easy, but that 13 years shall bring you 13 portions. Don't Amen. 13 portions. Great mighty things will happen in your life. Amen. This year alone, Amen. 13 solid testimonies Amen. are coming. Amen. Confounding 13 solid testimonies. Amen. Unmatchable testimonies. Amen. In, indescribable testimonies. Amen. Oh, yeah. Unprecedented increase. Amen. They are coming your way. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I cover your wife and yourself with blood of Jesus. Lord of Jesus. I cover your two kids with blood of Jesus. Lord of Jesus. Your hand work. Anything you lay hand on from today, you shall prosper. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Go, it shall be well with Amen. you. I soak you in the pool of blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. It shall be well with you. Amen. It shall be well with Amen. you. Amen. My hands are blessed. Amen. Anyone I touch shall be blessed. Amen. My hands are blessed. Amen. Anyone I touch shall be Amen. blessed. Amen. Ah, thank you, Heavenly thank Father. You, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Our food, and we eat like king and queen that we are. After eating, we will give what we have to them and they will go back home safely and we will continue to do the work. Every member of Abounding Grace Foundation has said thank you so much. Thank you for your support. All those that are giving us much more money to support us, trust me, that money means so much to me because I'm going to gather them now and give to them what we have. And Heavenly Father is going to shock you all. Amen. He's going to shock you all. Amen. All you that are standing by us, God will stand by you. Amen. God will stand by you. Amen. Put in Ireland there, in America, in Malaysia, in Italy, in Germany, in Austria, in Nigeria, wherever you are, and you are supporting this work, God will support you. Amen. And God will stand by you. Amen. Thank you, all of you that have been there for us. Please appreciate you all. We are going to say bye bye to you now. Thank you all. Father, we thank you for this wonderful day. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Amen.